Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to be making a camera to monitor our 3D printer. So back a little while ago when I was doing 3D prints I would quite often have a time-lapse video recording of the 3D printer whilst it was printing and I'd put them in these videos. You've probably not noticed, although you might have done, uh, that this stopped a little while ago and this was because to do these videos I was using this action cam camera which had a time-lapse mode all built in. You just had to tell it how long between pictures and it would take a picture at all those intervals and you could use it as a time-lapse. And then I decided that I would actually use it for what it was intended for. Um, there is a case here somewhere that would apparently make it water resistant to quite a reasonable depth for quite a long amount of time. So I took it to the swimming pool. Turns out the case wasn't watertight at all. And annoyingly, we were swimming in a saltwater pool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so goodbye camera. Now I came meaning to replace this but I just hadn't decided what to replace it with, whether to get another cheap one, whether to get a fancy one. But the other thing that I had in mind was our 3D printer is right at the other end of our house from where my workshop is and upper floor. It's just where the 3D printer is at the minute. At some point I'd like to get it into my workshop but that's for another day. To check how the print's going or check that the first layers are did, I've got to go out through the kitchen, upstairs, through the hallway and into the far room upstairs which is a little inconvenient. Now the printer, I've recently upgraded the wrap wrap that it's running on the Duet 3 Mini 5 Plus. So we've got this interface We've named the printer Printy. On here there is a webcam section and you can actually view webcam surveillance as long as you've got a camera which can put it, the photo on the local area network that you could access over a web address. So I'd really like that. I could then just come on and check how the print's going and see what's happening um, and whether I need to go up and do it. Even stuff like, oh, I'm going to print, did I leave the bed clean? I'd be able to go and check it using the web server to see the last picture that had been uploaded. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make my own camera rather than buying another one off the shelf that I can then set up to do my time lapse and allow the picture to come onto the web interface. The other thing that's come along just as I'm starting this project is the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, so this is meant to have increased um, quality for the cameras. So it seems an ideal opportunity to use this in this project, especially because it has this awesome on off button, which is going to make the project so much easier in the future. I'm going to start off with the Raspberry Pi 5 and order in some other components that I'm going to need. And then we can get started with this project. So I've got all the parts for this project. I've got the Raspberry Pi 5. I've got the 27 watt USB power supply to power that Raspberry Pi 5. I've got the active cooler add-on to put on there just to help with uh, heat because I'm potentially gonna be running this for long periods of time if I've got a long print. For my display, I wanted a like touchscreen interface so that I could control it all from the one unit. So I've got the uh, four inch touch screen hyperpixel. Because I want the cooler on and the hyperpixel, the hyperpixel comes with one extender for the GPIO. I'm not sure that's gonna give enough ventilation for the fan. So I've got a second one just so that I can uh, sort of increase that height difference by another header, which will hopefully give me enough airspace to let the fan circulate cool air around the Raspberry Pi 5. So I'm hoping that will work. So I'm gonna put two of those on and then put the extender on the hyperpixel. 
And then the last thing I've got is I've got the Raspberry Pi high quality camera. Now I've got the M12 mount because I think the wide angle lens is going to be a good pick for this project. So I've got that lens and then in here I've got the high quality camera module and I've got the standard to mini camera cable because the ones that come with it aren't compatible with the Raspberry Pi 5 so I've already swapped that over so I can plug it straight in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all connected together and give it a little uh, test, check I can get the camera working and that I can program it to do time lapse. So I'm going to put all this together and then we can check how it's working. I'm ready to test out my idea. So I've just put the high quality camera with the wide angle lens on this tripod for testing. I've connected that in to the Raspberry Pi 5 on the port zero for the camera or display. Obviously I'm using the camera in this instance. And then I've got the Hyperpixel plugged into the GPIO with the extra height in the um, header extensions and I've put on extra long standoff posts just to hold that securely. I've plugged it in and I've got this code running so we can check if it's working correctly. I'll go through the code briefly. If you'd like to see the code in full detail then there'll be a video going through it in its entirety over on the Element 14 community site. So check that out if you're interested. But for now let's go through this. I'm using Pygame in Python. I'm setting up all my Pygame stuff and just setting up variables that I'm going to need to refer to. I've defined a few things so like putting text on with rendering it as a surface, drawing buttons, starting a recording, making a folder, recording an image, getting a low quality image as a temp image to display on the uh, preview screen, picking up button presses and detecting where you've pressed. I've got like a touch handler. Now the X, Y at the minute, I couldn't seem to get it to rotate. So I'm just dividing X by 480 and then timesing it by 800 to get it the right way around. So that's sort of a bit of a bodge, but it's working for now. And then my main loop of code just looks to see if I'm recording, if it's a new recording and it has to initialize and make a folder or if it's in recording and it's already got a folder, it will just take a picture at the interval of delay. Now delay is set by pressing where the delay is given. So I've got five seconds. I can press that for 10 seconds, tap it again. It'll go up to 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 and 300. So if I set it to 10 seconds delay on there and then I press the record button, the record will go to red show it's recording and then the delay will actually count down so you know when it's going to take a picture. I found before when I've done time lapse if it doesn't tell you where you are in the time lapse cycle you might just want to grab something or put your hand in but then you don't want to do it just as it's taking a picture. So the location is uh, in a folder on the Pi called time lapse. Now the temp picture is uploaded always as temp and it just overwrites it every time. To be able to get the pictures off this nice and easily we use uh, Nextcloud. We've got a home instance of that so I'm just syncing that folder with Nextcloud. But I've also set up um, the temp file to be uh, synced that I can then obtain that on the printing interface and I'll be able to see that temp image on the web interface of the 3D printer to see the status. The temp image is when it's recording is the last one at the interval but when it's not recording it does a temp image on uh, sort of every cycle round. So that will be fairly updated. Um, the camera locks out the code whilst it's taking the picture and that tends to be about three seconds. So the interval is about that. I could have set it to take longer if I'd put in a temp value delay and counted that. But for now I'm happy with this as it is. 
Next it's time to make a 3D case for all this to go in. So let's start designing that. I'm thinking it's going to be an all-in-one. So the camera I've currently been using, I set up on a tripod just opposite the 3D printer because that's on a sort of desktop table. I'm thinking I'm going to mount a case where it will hold the Raspberry Pi like that and the camera at 90 degrees, uh, all in one block. And then I'll be able to put a um, Whitworth thread screw in the bottom. So I'll be able to screw it onto the tripod. Uh, and then because it's usually in line with the 3D printer, it's usually much lower. So having the screen on top that I can just look down and see it will be really handy. Let's get started with designing that. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? For the case, I've been designing this case. So I started with OpenSCAD. I modeled the HD camera with the M12 lens and the screen for the hyperpixel. I've made a box and I've taken the camera and made a mounting point for that in the bottom of the box. And I've made a mounting point for the hyperpixel in the box here. I was about to start putting mounting for the Raspberry Pi and holding it in place and port holes for USB and power and things like that, but the project has suddenly paused. <laughs> so I was telling my husband all about this and he suddenly went, ah, are you gonna need the 3D printer because it's not currently uh, all assembled and working? I went, yes, why? It turns out he's decided that the printer needed an enclosure for winter. Well, it does. Prints in winter get quite bad because it's, very cold and if we try to do a big print it warps so we have needed an enclosure for quite some time I just didn't realize we were actually going to get around to doing it that's fine I thought I'll wait till it's all assembled and then I'll print this and then I realized if the 3d printer is in an enclosure I'm going to struggle to get a good shot of it through the door with a camera on a tripod so we're going to scrap this design and I'm going to start again <laughs> The design I've gone for is going to be in multiple parts. We've used um, a Hyperpixel Raspberry Pi case before on projects around the house um, that was quite good. It held securely around it, uh, but obviously that was for, well, it was for a Raspberry Pi 3 and then it was modified for Raspberry Pi 4, but it's not going to work straight out of the file for a Raspberry Pi 5 and I've added that extra height. So I've gone to OpenSCAD and I've modified it to have extra vents and extra height. So this is the top part of the case and I've added a hole for a power on off button and for the camera ribbon cable to come out. I can set the height here that I need to add for the extra height. So that's the upper part and the lower part I've modified for the extra ports I need. So I've got the right ports for the HDMI, the USB-C, and I've added in a power button that I can put a like, cocktail stick through and press. And I've adjusted the Ethernet and the USB ports. So that will all fit around this Raspberry Pi unit and then I'm going to mount the camera separately inside the enclosure and just feed the ribbon cable around the enclosure and then seat this part on top of the enclosure. Um, we've got a nice flat wooden area on the top. I've done the camera in FreeCAD instead for a bit of a change so I've got this that the camera will sit in and poke out and then the rear part that that front bit will go on to and that will get screwed into the wooden frame of the enclosure. So I'm going to get those all printed out and then we can test the fit and see how it's all going to work. 
Right, so the pit parts have all printed. Hopefully next time I have to print parts, I'll have a time-lapse um, video of the printing. I've got the case for the Raspberry Pi and I've got the case for the screen. Uh, not for the screen, for the camera. That's the screen. I've uh, just set in some M2.5 uh, heat certs in there. So now it's time to get assembling it all together. Right, so there's the camera assembly. It's got this bit on the back of the assembly so that this flap cable won't get kinked. And this is the right angle for where our enclosure is to hopefully film the printing. Right, so I've mounted it. I've, this is our new enclosure. I've mounted the camera here, right in the middle on the front part of the enclosure. And then I've put the screen just above it here. Really, the test is let's send something to be printed and see how it goes. So I'm really pleased how this project's gone. We've got the 3D printer in the new enclosure as a little bonus I wasn't expecting at the start of the project. Um, but I've got my um, camera, I've got my view, I can view it on the web interface for the duet board and I get my time-lapse video of the 3D printing. I'm really pleased with how it's gone. Um, it's gonna be really useful and yeah what do you think? Do you think you'd make a camera like this. Have you ever taken something like that action camera that I had at the start and rather than buying a new one made your own so that you could add extra features in that might be useful for you? Let me know uh, in the comments but for now that's all so I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>